Pastor Bill Evans here, Chetwin Fellowship Baptist Church. Uh, glad to help out with uh, Chet TV Ministries. I think it's up here, Christian Ministries. Uh, I'm finding out it's on YouTube, uh, whatever. I didn't know how to check, but he says it's there, so I'll check into some of those things and um, maybe see what some of the other guys are doing. But we welcome you in the name of the Lord to a time of, uh, if you're shut in or locked down or whatever, just uh, bedridden, uh, hopefully your heart will be encouraged with some thoughts from the Word of God and uh, just regarding the gospel of Jesus Christ. And my oldest son uh, is a boy that likes to play with words and um, probably got some of that from me, but... Um, I, I want us to consider some things today, and uh, people like to be the center of something, and uh, the, the center of something, and you know, a center of attraction and whatever, they like it, and we use this big word today about affirming things and affirming one another, and those are good words. Uh, I want us to consider today from our scriptures some words that, and I'm calling it when I, when, when I's in the middle. And the, the words I have, my wife and her, our, our friend at our house live there, uh, they watch Jeopardy all the time and go with these weird things. Well, I can do the weird, weird stuff too. And so when I is in the middle is what I want you to consider today. And there's some words that, uh, you know, with I in the middle, you don't want to have, and I'll talk of some of those, but we've got some that are really, really important and crucial in, your, in our life and in our English language and in our Bible. Um, somebody says you are born alone and you die alone, and the rest of the time you play on a team. You're born alone, you die alone, the rest of the time you play on a team. You're supposed to be on a team, you're supposed to be a team player. Somebody else made this statement, there's no I in team. Well, I figured something out one day, there's no I in team, that's true. But there's two in idiot. And uh, uh, what is the word idiot? Well, that's a derogatory term really, but it really, it really simply means, and it comes from the idea of uh, somebody they're doing their own thinking. Regardless of truth, regardless of fact, regardless of whatever, they're doing their own thinking, no, this is what I believe. And that really puts you into the discussion of that word idiot. Uh, if, if you're contrary to everyone else, okay, idiot has an I in the middle. And that's a problem, okay? So watch for that one. If you're an idiot, sometimes you end up with other words that are important. The word crime has an I in the middle of it. The word crime, C-R-I-M-E, right? The I is in the middle. You don't want to be in the, I, in the, the, the middle of a crime. Because I, I just spent time guarding at the jail a bunch this last week. And somebody did a crime and I get called in. I don't like being there. They don't like being there. But I have to watch them and protect them and make sure they're well. When you do crime, jail's the outcome. The Bible says, Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit. When Jesus lives within us, that we have love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, temperance, faith, all those things. And then it makes this little statement Paul does with the help of the Spirit of God. He says, against these things, men don't make laws. Nobody's got a law, you can't love your neighbor. Nobody's got a law that says, uh, thou shalt steal. It says, no, don't do that. And so um, those things make you a crime. You don't want to be in the middle of a crime. The word thing has an eye in the middle of it. And what's really important for you to understand? Because sometimes people might just think, the way others treat me, the way things happen, I'm just a thing. In the great universe scheme of things, I'm just a thing. And that's the devil's lie. Because my Bible tells me that I am made and you are made in the image of God. You are made in the image of God. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And we're given will and we're given ability to think and we're given ability to have emotions where we repent and say sorry and whatever. And thing is a very important uh, word to be careful of. We are not just things. We are th made in the image of God, not a thing. And so we're not nothing. We are something. I don't know what, how you translate that into English, how you want. But so uh, that word thing, you're not a thing with the eye in the middle. You're something special made in the image of God. A little girl said to me in high school one day, I said something about God. She said, I don't believe in God. I said, that's all right because he believes in you. You don't believe in God, that's okay. He believes in you. And he knows what he can do with you and in you, through you. The next thing we want to do, here's an important one. The word smile. You've heard this before. Smile. You're in the middle of it. You want to be something, in the middle of something special? Smile. It costs you little to smile, very little energy to smile, less energy to smile. They said it does frown. You screw your face all up in a frown or whatever. That's a lot of energy. A good way to lose weight. If you smile, you're, you're taking oxygen because you're laughing usually and smile, and it's just good for you. And you know somebody said, if you add an S to smile, you've got the longest word in the world because there's a mile between the two S's. 
a mile from beginning to end is in between those two S's. Smile. Smiling is good for you. I love to smile. I love to laugh. I start to look at this face in the morning. It makes me laugh, and my day generally goes downhill from there. It's free. It costs nothing. James 1, verse 2, the writer James says, Count it all joy. This is going to tie into the next one. Count it all joy. Why? Because and be happy about whatever situation you have in life. Why? Most cases, frowning about it and crying about it um, doesn't stop, doesn't change the circumstance. Worrying about it does not change the circumstance one lick. And so you sit there and you're crying and all those things. No, that's not going to work. So he says, uh, smile and uh, it doesn't cost anything. It's good. Be, be in all things. Count it all joy. And he says in the rest of that verse, for the trial that you're going to face. Trial's another word with I in the middle of it. I've been in court a few times recently. You don't like to be there in the middle of a trial situation and people are saying things about you, right or wrong or whatever, and, and you're trying to argue your point. Trials are something where you're in the middle and it's really a struggle. But they're there appointed by God to make you grow stronger and what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. And so here we have a uh, trial. Psalm 55, 22 says, Cast your burden upon the Lord. He cares for you, as I've said already. You just cast that burden. Give it to him. It's, it's kind of like uh, place your burden upon him. Deposit it upon him. You go to the bank and here's my money and whatever. Deposit your burden on the Lord. Why? Because he cares for you. He'll take care of that and, and your interest in it. Here's another really important word. It's the word obedience. Young people, pay attention. Here's a word, obedience. It's not just your home. If you don't learn obedience in your home, you're going to be back in that other word, crime. Because people will trip you up and you're not smart enough to obey your mom and dad, you'll find out that you'll thumb your nose at the law. And uh, it, it's sad for me to see some little face looking out the window of the cell like this. Pastor Bill, uh, I, I didn't do it. Well, I can't help that. They seem to think you did. But if you're obedient, it says, the, show, the Bible says, children, be obedient to your parents. And then he gives her, God gives a special reason why that's important for children to be obedient to their parents. You know why? He says, this is the first of the commandments that has to do with a promise. And the promise is long life. The promise is long life. That if we would take and be obedient to God and obedient to our, who tells us to be obedient to our parents, then we will be blessed. The laws of the land, if we're obedient there, we don't have to fear. How many times we see a policeman, oh, I better be careful, I'm doing something, whatever. Uh, whatever. If you're doing nothing wrong, you have no reason to be afraid. Obedience has got an eye in the middle. And it brings such blessings as we follow it. A big word that has an eye in the middle of it in my Bible is the word faith. The word faith. Somebody made the little an acronym or whatever for the word faith. Faith is forsaking all. I trust him. The him that's talked about is Jesus and him has an eye in the middle of it too. And uh, Jesus just loves that we come to him, that we are caring for him. Uh, caring about him, caring about what's going on in our lives, forsaking all, I trust him. What does this tell you, this, this word, uh, word play that we have, forsaking all, I trust him? It brings you into a situation of discussion and relationship with Jesus. You, you don't just say, well, my parents had faith and therefore I'm good enough to get in with that. That don't work. That's the devil's lie, because he likes to lie to you, because he wants you to spend time with him uh, in eternity. It's the devil's lie. Forsaking all, I trust him. Trust is the word faith, and, and it's the same word. Forsaking all, I give up on that thing that, that, that I, I'm trying to be good at and say to God, well, here's my good thing, whatever. Forsaking all, I trust him. I trust him. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, makes an interesting statement about Jesus. And it says that uh, he who knew no sin. What? Yes, Jesus knew no sin. There was no record of sin uh, done by him and through him and uh, to others about him. But it says, he who knew no sin, uh, says this, uh, therefore, um, says, he made him to who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Jesus wants to give you God's righteousness, but he's not just going to give it for you. Be as bad and evil to be to do the crimes you want, be disobedient if you want, and forget about the eye in the middle and the blessings of that. He's all those things you can be, and Jesus is not going to give his righteousness, God's righteousness to that. But when we come to him and we say that, God, help me, I'm a sinner, and I need forgiveness. How do I find forgiveness? How do I undo the mess that I've made of my life? How do I undo that? And he says, guess what? 
if you have faith in me. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. It comes as a gift. And um, we, a gift is something that somebody gives to you, and you can say, well, I'll put it over there in the corner. I'm not going to open it. Maybe you know what it is. Maybe you don't want it. Well, that's, what would the person think that offers you a gift and you don't take it? Or if you take it, you say you take it, and then you don't open it. And he wants us for, to forsake the failures. And, you know, the relationship with Jesus isn't getting good enough. And then he says, oh, you're a nice kid. I'll hang with you. No, Jesus takes the vilest offender, our hymns book says, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. And so here we have faith is forsaking all. I trust him. And so um, what we got before my closing one's coming in a moment here. Faith is forsaking all. I trust him. Obedience then is, it goes back to that again. When we come to trust in Jesus, he wants us to be obedient to him. If we say we love him and don't keep his commandments, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's obedience. And so take the Bible, the word of God, read it, and live up to what it says. Live up to what it says. Uh, I just talked in another message about obedience, and the, the, the outcome of disobedience is bad. And so we want to uh, practice that. Trials come in life. That's God, uh, you know, if you just take seeds, and my wife is just putting out some nice seeds in the garden, little plants, and if they just get nothing but uh, water and protection or whatever, they just spindle all over the ground. But if you want your plant to grow up straight and strong, it's got to have wind, it's got to have trials, it's got to have issues. And that's what God builds into our life when he allows things. But he says, you can't count it all joy, and in the meantime, just deposit your, your problem on me. Put it in my hands. Sometimes people come to God and say, God, will you take one end of my problems and I'll take the other and we'll carry them? God says, no. God's big and strong enough to carry your problems without your hands attached. You give it to God. When you give it to God, you stand back and you see what he does. That's his plan and his desire for you. Smile. It costs you nothing. It costs you nothing. Find somebody and some, you're a stranger on the street. Smile at them and uh, you make their day. They could be having the most miserable day. You don't know that. But a smile, well, you know one thing for sure, will never hurt anybody. And rarely does somebody, what are you smiling at? And, well, I, no reason to not smile. And so I'm sharing one with you. And you break that hard-heartedness, that sad attitude of somebody oftentimes just by smiling. You're not a thing. You're something special made in the image of God. Don't be involved in crimes. Those who do. There's the word idiot in there. Doing your own thing is not a smart word. There's no I in team, but there's two in that. And I is in the middle of it, so be careful. My closing word is um, dying. Talk about faith. Talk about dying. Dying is an important word. And D-Y-I-N-G. And everybody, unless Jesus comes, as my Bible says, everybody will die one day. And you get to be standing before God one day. There's a story in the Bible where a man was dying, thief on the cross, and as he's dying, he finds faith in Jesus. And he says, oh, Jesus, that you would remember me when you come to your kingdom. And he found faith in Jesus, and he found forgiveness of sin. Jesus says, today you're going to be with me. That's what it's about. And so I trust that our hearts will be encouraged with these things. Um, uh, idiot, be careful. Don't be there. Don't be involved in crime. Idiot will lead you there. Thing, you're not one thing. You're special and made in the image of God. Smile, it costs you nothing. Trials, come, they make you stronger. Obedience is important. It's got great rewards, long life. Faith is forsaking all. I trust him, Jesus, for my, to take away my sins. Thief on the cross, in dying, found faith and found forgiveness. I trust that you might too. Before you die, have a relationship with Jesus. Amen.